One of the pieces that Burke wrote is called The Definition of Man. And I'm going to talk about that because when he talks about um, any man, when he says man, he means all humans. And we can, we can debate that, um, how true that is uh, uh, when we get to the end of this. But he says there are certain things that he finds, um, he says in culture, really it seems very much to be part of Western culture, that he says defines humans. Again, really probably Western culture. And as we look at these, we'll see how they all uh, do represent ways in which people do experience guilt. So many of the parts of the definition of man, in fact, are sources for the guilt that we suffer. Um, or that we I say suffer, maybe it's not the right term, but as you're going to see, they in fact are many of the things that are used in advertising to appeal to our own needs and the, and the need for some sort of resolution. So one of the first things Burke says is that man is the symbol using animal. And this is not really a part about, about guilt, but he says that we are the symbol using animal. And what's important here is that other animals do communicate. Uh, whale song, uh, I suppose dogs bark and they sort of, they do recognize each other with the, with the tail and the ears, you know, backing or going up and so forth, but being friendly or being aggressive. My favorite example of how animals communicate is bees who will do a little dance for each other when they find food about, and this little dance uh, is about how to go and find the food, right? But what's unique about humans is that we are symbol using animals. So it's not merely that we can say, I'm uh, aggressive, I'm friendly, or the food's over there, but that we can tell a story. And so this is the example actually Burke gives in Definition of Man, I'm gonna share it with you. He said that outside of his office window was a nest of wrens, right, birds, right, they're wrens. And he noticed that uh, the mama bird, papa bird, I guess, had uh, their little chicks, and one by one the chicks all, out of the nest except for one bird that wasn't leaving the nest uh sounds like a lazy bird sounds like me as a child right uh but wasn't leaving the nest uh i did leave the nest thank you anyway but uh and so burke said that one day he saw uh, he believed it was the father bird i don't know why uh i don't know much that much about birds dangled a piece of food over you know baby bird's mouth and baby bird oh, oh went to go and get it right and then Papa Bird moved further away with it, and Baby Bird followed a little further, and Baby Bird followed until Baby Bird was, uh, uh, Papa was up on the edge of the nest holding the food out, and Baby Bird is just there balancing on the edge trying to get to it. And Burke said that just then, the pup Bird dropped the food and with its beak grabbed Baby Bird's open beak and jerked it out of the nest. And thus successfully de birded the nest, right? Sort of tricked the bird into, into being thrown out. What Burke says is that this having happened, the birds can never talk about it. Now, this is more me than Burke, right? You know, you're not going to see Papa Bird, uh, I'm going acronistic here, right? You know, on the golf course, you know, golfing there. Going, oh, yeah, it was me with my putter, right? Oh, I tell you what, finally, that little bastard wasn't leaving, so I just had to go and just, uh, da, dang it, had to uh, just throw him out of the nest, right? That's not happening. You know, Mama Bird's not, again, these are silly examples, right? At the beauty shop, ah, oh, it was awful. Junior wouldn't leave, so finally, Harold just held the food outside the nest and jerked his little ass right out of there. You know I mean, that's not happening. Wait, they're not gonna write a book on how to successfully de-bird your nest. That's thing that humans do. And Burke says that we're symbol using animals. We make symbols and we also misuse symbols. When he says misuse symbols, you have to understand that uh, Burke wanted to see a peaceful world. And he said that we use symbols in ways to manipulate people, to deceive, to stir up anger and angst and hatred and violence and war. And so he said that's us misusing symbols, that we, we uh, use symbols in a way that uh, are not for the benefit of humanity, right? But we're a symbol using animals. And thus think about like rhetoric, right? The creation of reality through symbols. That's what we as humans do. Uh, we don't just say the food is there, but we, or, you know, I mean, commercials don't say, hello, we're a restaurant. We have food for you to eat. No, no. They tell you about how it's part of a 
fun experience, a family experience. It's authentic. It's nourishing. It's comforting. They, right? That's all the symbol using stuff. Right? So yeah, so we tell stories, right? We tell stories. That's what it comes down to. Is we, we like to tell stories. Or dramas, as Burke says, we tell dramas. Right? So Burke says we're also inventor of the negative. And the negative is an interesting concept. Um, when you're describing something, you say, well, they're not too tall, or somebody, right? They're not too tall, they're not too short. Okay, you haven't told me what they are, right? We talk about things are not, right? Point to a not tree, right? You can't. You go, well, it's a thing out in the yard. It's not really a tree. It's, um, you know, it may be bigger than a bush. Like, <laughs> you know, you're telling me all the things it's not. You're not telling me what it is. So we have this notion of the thing that is not that is not there. And part of it is we have notions about what we do not want to be. So we have, uh, and as humans, we talk a lot about the things that are not or should not be. And he has this, uh, parts in parentheses, by the way, are, are still Burke. He says we are moralized by the negative. I love that, right? He says we're moralized by the negative that so many of our uh, uh, moral codes and systems, what we believe we, uh, should and shouldn't do are based on what we want to not be, what we want to avoid. Burke says what he calls the Decalogue, also known as the Ten Commandments, or Decalogue. That's a very Burke thing to call it. Uh, he says, you know, those are all things you should not do. And even when it tells you what to do, it's, it's by a roundabout way of saying what you shouldn't do. So honor thy mother and father is do not dishonor thy mother and father. Right? But we're moralized by the negative. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, um, my parents did less tell me about um, who I should be like than who I shouldn't be like. It was really not much talk about why can't you be like them. Thankfully, I don't think they ever said that to me, thankfully. But there was a lot of sometimes blatant, sometimes more subtle statements about who to not be like, who to not hang around, what to not get into or start doing. So many of our moral codes come from we want, don't want to do what we want to avoid. And so here I'm going to give you an example. We're going to watch a video now together, right, of not being something, right, the fear of being something and really what we don't want to be. All right, everyone, we made it. My job is to help new homeowners who have turned into their parents. I'm having a big lunch and then just a snack for so dinner. So we're just... using a speakerphone in this store. Is that a good idea? One of the ways I do that is to get them out of the home. You're looking for a grout brush. This Garth, is the... did he ask for your help? No. 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 We all see it. We all see it. He has blue hair. OK. Blue. Progressive can't protect you from becoming your parents, but we can protect your home and auto when you bundle with us. Keep it coming. You don't know him. OK, so that example is sort of fun, sort of a silly example, but it's about what you don't want to be. You don't want to be like your parents. And so the, the extent to which this commercial relates to it is the way in which it's trying to let you know that it is a company that's sort of hip. The way that you want, don't want to be like your parents, that's sort of funny. It makes you think of their brand and progressive. Uh, and also in that, by the way, there's a little bit of sort of, um, we're hip and we're in the know, and so you, you, can, you can trust with us, right? That's a little bit of what's going on there. But yeah, but that commercial is all about the things you don't want to be, right? It is, it's playing on that, the fear of the things that we will, uh, we will become. Another line of Burke's definition of man, as he says that man is separated from his natural condition by instruments of his own making. A lot of words for you to pause and write down, right? So we're separated from our natural condition by instruments of our own making. So here's a story that Burke gives, and I like it so much. He says that in, I believe it was 64, forgive me if the year is wrong, maybe 68, he and his wife were walking along a road, they had a farm, on Andover, New Jersey, and they're walking along the road there uh, just by the light of the stars and the moon. By the light of the moon. Right? It's where they're walking along, and they felt perfectly comfortable. He said right about that same time, there was a great panic in the, east, uh, in the major cities along the eastern seaboard because the lights had gone out. Right? So people were panicked by the lack of electric light. He and his wife were not. Well, that's because within the city, we become very dependent upon natural light. And in the country, you're sort of used to eh, not always having it so much. It doesn't create the same sort of uh, fear and chaos. But we are separated from uh, our natural condition. That is to say, our state as animals. We're naturally animals. 
we are animals. We are, you know, I remember sort of being disappointed when I was in school and found out that humans are mammals, like dogs and cows. And you know, I mean, yeah, we're mammals too. You know, we're animals. We, we just are. We're animals. Um, and so we have a number of things, you know, inventions of our own making that we use to try to denounce the way that we're part of nature. That a lot of uh, beauty care products emphasize you know, defying aging, right? Defying wrinkles. The idea that these natural conditions are bad, that going natural is bad. And, you know, we think about um, the products we use, I use, um, for there are things like um, deodorants, right? Bodies naturally have odors, but you know, you never see a cow going and you know, out in the field, you know, putting a little bit of underarm deodorant on or something. But humans in Western culture, we very much do that and believe in the shame and embarrassment and the stigma of, of body odor, right? So we're very much afraid of our natural condition. So here's a commercial about that. Is your thinning hair prematurely aging you? Are you seeing scalp where there used to be hair? Don't let your hair loss take over. Take control with HairMax, the first home use laser light device clinically proven to regrow hair. And I'm not saying there's not a stigma associated with hair loss and it's not traumatic to persons. I, I don't mean to say that at all. What I'm saying is that it's about, you know, as this thing naturally happens to your body, about um, the guilt associated with it and how you can get rid of that shame and that guilt to the use of this sort of fancy schmancy laser product thing, right? Burke says we're also goaded by the spirit of hierarchy, right? So hierarchy is about, you know, who is better than whom, right? You know, knowing where you are there. And we are so compelled by hierarchy, knowing who's number one. You see these shows all the time, these singing competitions, dancing competitions, talent shows on TV. And you have multiple people who are really good. I mean, cooking shows, flower shows, really good, really talented. But there could only be one winner. Why? What is that about? You have you know, two or three people who are amazing singers. We can't stop and celebrate that. We have to know which one we're going to vote the number one, right? The number one singer. <clears throat> we have to know who's the top of that hierarchy. Uh, I, I uh, used to get in classes a lot, students ask me, well, what was the class average? And I'd say, well, after an exam, I'd give them an exam back, and people want to know, what's the class average? And I'd say, I don't know, why Why you want to know? Well, so I'd know how I did. Well, it doesn't make a difference. You just want to know if you're you know, below or above the average. It's that sense of competition, right? So we're goaded very much by the spirit of hierarchy. So let's look at a commercial for a pickup truck. And notice in the commercial the way that it's always about uh, – impressing people and then impressing is competition having better having more uh in a, in a truck right so it wows people that even the truck itself sometimes is jaw dropping but notice that that all this theme you're going to see about jaw dropping in this commercial is all about competition and having more and being better being more impressive being higher in the hierarchy Introducing the most capable Sierra lineup ever. Okay, so that's hierarchy, right? And that's about who, where am I in comparison to other people? Am I better or not? This is different from the last idea, and Burke says, oh, by the way, uh, moved by the sense of order is the second part there. We don't need to get into it. He also says we are rotten with perfection. And that, by the way, is a joke. Rhetoric humor is, you got to want to see it. We're rotten with perfection. Something is perfect, and it's rotten at the same time. See? And it's, you know, it's academic humor, right? But Burke says we are rotten with perfection. We can't help but want things to be perfect, right? Um, yeah, we compete with each other. That's one thing. But also, we want everything to be just so, just perfect. So we're going to look at this commercial from Lowe's to see how Lowe's tells you that with, by them, with them, your yard can be just like rolling out a carpet, perfect. 
Okay, I'm embarrassed to say that I have spent well over an hour, I should have quit earlier, uh, trying to integrate the video. So there is a Lowe's commercial, the link is in D2L, and I'm going to also put the link in the comment section on the YouTube video if possible. But check that out. But when you see the commercial, I'm assuming you've watched it now, when you see the commercial, you'll note the way that uh, there is this notion of the perfect yard and also the Lowe's um, slogan is never stop improving right never be content with what you have always try for the perfect have the perfect be obsessed with the perfect right so if we look at the definition of man sort of in sum we have this issue of the negative separate from nature hierarchy and perfection and these are all places uh as i've covered here uh, that may be the source of a person's feeling of guilt or disorder, just that sense of being um, inadequate, right? And I talk about this, you know, individuals feeling inadequate. The reason I say that is because media, uh, such as commercials, or also more sort of traditional rhetoric, I suppose, like politicians say, may appeal to your individual feelings of guilt. They may appeal to them rhetorically. So if we go back then to that redemptive cycle, right, again, you see there is um, order and the pollution is the way in which you see, uh, you know, that sort of that negative, you're moralized by the negative, that you are the thing you know you shouldn't be, you are um, too much connected to nature, you're too wild, too animal, your body is doing all these things that human bodies do, right? Uh, that you're not competitive enough, right? You're, you're not number one, that you have not achieved perfection. And so then through the purchase of a product or a service or potentially voting for a candidate, you believe that you will then bring yourself into this better place where then you'll be redeemed and you'll have restored order.